Hi, Paul. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Jim. It's an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. So tell us about the new facility that, that you guys have uh, coming online in, in South Carolina. Yeah, thanks, Jim. And uh, today is actually a very proud day for all of us at SDL. Uh, you know, this has been probably 20 years in the making. I think the, the company's always wanted to uh, to establish itself here in the US. And, uh, and now we're uh, uh, really proud to open this state-of-the-art facility here in South Carolina. How big is the facility? What what types of um, products will you be making there? And um, you know how many people will be employed? Yeah, no, good question. I think look, the the current size of the facility has the capability of uh, of making um, uh, optical cable uh, at the moment. Uh, very much focused on ribbon, uh, bonded ribbon, and uh, and loose tube, which is really where the U.S. market is going at the moment. Uh, the, the site's 52 acres. It employs 150 people. It's the part of the phase one of the growth. And uh, and one of the things that we are trying to encourage now is a lot more uh, local talent, local grown talent. Because I will say to you, there is a, uh, a shortage of good fibre experts in the industry and not only here in North America, but globally. Excellent. So I, I take it that this new facility has been built um, because of the big fiber broadband rollout that we see going on in the States? And uh, is it part of the Build America program? Oh, very much so. I think the importance, we're a global, uh, a global manufacturer. We operate in over 100 countries around the world. Um, uh, we have facilities in Asia, in Europe, in Latin America. And, uh, and I think that the growth of 5G and broadband, broadband around the world um, since COVID has seen a significant investment from many areas. Um, North America is uh, no different. North America is one of the largest markets in the world for optical broadband um, and optical fibre uh, outside of China. And, uh, and I think with uh, the investments coming from the government in relation to, uh, to BEAD, the ARDOF money that's being invested in the US, and also the tiered one, tiered two operators and data centre uh, hyperscaler providers are all investing very heavily in relation to uh, optical fibre. And a large part of that here in North America um, is uh, just starting to, we're just starting to see the tip of the North American market. I think what you'll see over the next five years is quite a significant uh, uh, increase in the rollout, trying to connect all Americans to uh, uh, to broadband. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, one of the aspects of it that's, uh, um, I guess, one of the goals of this program, of course, is to address supply chain issues. So, you know, what what are you seeing from um, you know the STL perspective, or or better yet, from your customers' perspective? Um, how does this help? address the supply chain and what other snags or issues are, are still out there from the customer's perspective? Uh, I think that's a really good question. I think uh, we've seen in the last two years a number of supply chain issues in relation to lead times uh, in terms of receiving product. And, uh, and I think being um, local, having the capability to react on time, um, you know, the new North American headquarters here in South Carolina gives us the ability to manage a global supply chain um, and to be able to react in a very short period of time. And, and as I said to you before, having this uh, initial investment in this, this factory, um, and, and I must admit it is a state-of-the-art uh, facility, um, allows us to really be able to react in a very short period of time. Uh, in relation to all these supply chain issues that have happened in the past. I'd probably say now, Jim, the supply chain issues uh, are not as bad as they were in the last two years, but I do believe probably in the next 12 months they're going to be a real issue here in the US. Okay. And in terms of um, you know the, the price or the cost of goods manufactured here in the States versus importing them from Asia or, or, or elsewhere, you know, what is the trend that you're seeing in, in that? Look, uh, look. I think the in terms of pricing, I think uh, globally, I, th I think pricing is quite stable. You will always have countries that are cheaper, 
you'll always have uh, competitors that will be cheaper. Um, but I think the major drive for us here at STL is driving innovation and, and continually uh, trying to focus on the fibre and on the cable and on the connectivity that mm. allows us to, 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 to give more value in terms of the overall network. And if you put yourself into a hyperscaler or into a telecom operator, you know, they're looking for latency, they're looking for bend, in, uh, bend insensitivity. They're looking to be able to roll out networks quickly at a much lower cost. And, you know, one of the things that this facility does bring is a very unique capability, what we call bonded ribbon. And that bonded ribbon, when you look at the cable alone, okay, is a configuration. But when you put all of the other things together, like uh, the service providers trying to connect that product, speed and ability to uh, install that product becomes critical. So having this uh, technology to allow the installation and connection to the connectivity through our cable um, really provides so many benefits on so many levels and not only cost. Well, fantastic. Congratulations again on, on launching the new facility and, and thank you for joining us today. And, and it's an absolute pleasure and I really thank you uh, for giving me the time to talk to you, Jim.